Today we're discussing Taylor's 514 CE. Hey, James G here with Tarpley Music in Fort Worth, Texas. Remember, you can always find us online at tarpleymusic.com. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We really want to grow our audience base, and it really helps us a lot if you do that. So I'm holding this gorgeous Taylor 514 CE. So it is a 14, so that is the Grand Auditorium body. Uh, it's got a nice Venetian cutaway. It is 25.5 uh, in scale length, the scale length being the uh, distance from the nut to the bridge, so very standard uh, guitar in that sense. Black graphite nut. We've got a micarta saddle here and nickel tuners, and um, it's a, a tropical mahogany uh, neck. Uh, the difference is that you'll really hear this is the tone woods used in the body. So first of all, we've got an urban red iron bark, which has got this gorgeous red hue to it. It's a beautiful grain, and it just looks gorgeous, but uh, phonically, it sounds a lot like rosewood. It's got a lot of those qualities to it, so it's becoming a really good tone wood that um, Taylor has really gone out to try to find other tone woods that may not be just those traditional tone woods. And I really like this one. This combined with the torrified Sitka spruce top is nice and warmer. So if you're not familiar with torrification, um, what that is is basically it's the they're trying to emulate what it's like to the aged process of wood. So a lot of people will go out and literally look for vintage guitars that are over 20 years old because that spruce has mellowed out and it's gotten you know a little older. It's dried out, so it's got this warmer kind of a tone. And uh, and of course, what can do that? Well, age can do that. So what torrefication does is it basically puts it in an oven style thing uh, with no oxygen or anything, and it bakes it. So it's it's just taking the wood and and speeding up the process of it drying and kind of aging. So if you're to see a nice, beautiful, new, fresh piece of Sitka spruce, it's going to look very, very white. And if you see uh, one that's been torrified, it's going to have kind of a brown, brownish hue to it. And then, of course, the difference with us is brightness and a little bit more mellow on the sound uh, that the top comes through. So they're both great. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a better version of Sitka spruce. It's a different version of Sitka spruce. A lot of people want a new Sitka spruce for that bite and that brightness. So, uh, but it's really cool. It really works. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've actually, uh, you know, get two of them next to each other, play torrified, not torrified. And so, um, which we will probably do in the future, but I really wanted to get this guitar uh, just so you can hear kind of what it sounds like for the torrefication of the process. Of course, ebony, fretboard, and bridge. So all good parts, uh, very gorgeous to look at, but sounds, sounds really good. So we're gonna mic it up few different ways and uh, you can hear what it can do sonically. So the first way we're going to hear this guitar is just direct. So we've literally just gone from a quarter inch cable in the guitar into a direct box into the interface in a Studio One. So uh, this is literally if you get home, hey I got a song idea, plug right in. This is the sound that you're going to get out of it here. And uh, EQ is flat. <laughs> So the first way we have this mic'd up today is using two small diaphragm condensers, also sometimes called pencil condensers, and we're doing it in an XY pattern. So the capsules are at a cross like this and at two 90 degree angles. So this is a really great way to do acoustic guitars because it's a real focused uh, on, on, on just this area of the guitar. So I've got it, this is about, about six to seven inches away. Uh, that can change depending on your particular guitar, but so here's XY with two small diaphragm condensers. So now, just so you can hear the differences, we're going to put that direct signal back in. So now you can hear the punchiness of that direct signal on top of the XY condensers. 
So now we're miking with a single large diaphragm condenser mic, and there's several different schools of thought of this. A lot of times it might be right in front, slightly angled to the 12th and 14th fret, about 8 inches back is a very, very common way. Uh, another way that you can do it is actually to have it elevated, angled a little bit. And I did it on this particular guitar because I feel like a lot of the sound is coming up this way. So a lot you'll learn with miking is there are several different ways. and just do the one that works the best. So I thought this was a really good way to represent the guitar with the large diaphragm condenser mic. This particular one here is the AKG C214, just a standard cardioid pattern, and here we go. So now to get a little bit of that punchiness in, we're going to add the direct signal, uh, direct signal in along with this large diaphragm condenser also. So here we go. So now we're going to mic with a dynamic microphone. This is the Sennheiser E906. Uh, not real common to, to do acoustic guitars with dynamic microphone, although you definitely can. Uh, a lot of times they're used if you're doing really heavy strumming or real percussive, kind of. Uh, but a lot of times people might only have a dynamic mic at home. So we're going to give a feel of what this would sound like with a dynamic microphone. I've got about six, seven inches away. It's just pointing at 12th, 14th fret. So now we're going to add the direct signal back into to get the combination of these two, which definitely can help bring up some more volume and gain if you're recording at home. All right, so we've heard the guitar mic'd up on its own, so now let's hear it in the mix with some backing tracks I did, that I did earlier. Hit it, boys. So my takeaways on this Taylor 514 CE, uh, I love it, both how it looks, the look of this wood and the torified, the top of it. I love the warmth that of the sound that you get from it, and it plays great. And if anyone knows, Taylor puts a lot of pride and a lot of time in the playability of their guitars. So, uh, you know, different guitar makers, 
there's a lot of great guitar makers and they tend to have their focus in it. So you know it's going to play great as soon as you pick it up. But what I was really impressed with is the mic'd up sound of this thing. I think it could really make an incredible studio guitar. Uh, I also do the audio for this channel and I get the privilege of listening to a lot of these guitars mic'd up like that for the for the first time for us. And uh, this one was just sounded really amazing with when it was mic'd up and I uh, so really excited about it from a studio standpoint. But other than that, of course, it's, uh, you know, in the ES2, you know it's going to sound good direct into a PA system. It's very consistent. That's why they use this system in all those guitars because of the three sensors that it has. Uh, this is a 15-inch radius. I can't remember if I mentioned the radius before when I was talking specs, but that's a really great flat surface, and that's kind of why I did a real simple 145 kind of arpeggio sort of pattern so you could just hear the the blend and the balance of all those strings I think is really good. So killer guitar, uh, we do sell a lot of Taylor. We've got a lot of Taylor up here. So uh, come and check this one out and come down to Tarpley and uh, pick this one up the wall and then pick up a normal Sitka Spruce that isn't torrified. And I think you'll be able to, as you're sitting there especially, you can really kind of hear those tonal differences. And like I said, I don't think one's better than the other. I think it's just, you know, it's another way to get a flavor of sound. And that's what guitar makers are always trying to do is get the, a new flavor or a different flavor. And you're not going to reinvent the wheel, right? Uh, you can just come up with a different wheel. So that's kind of uh, what they have done there. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you did. And uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. It really, really helps us out. We, we really appreciate that. And uh, if you want to know as we drop more videos, as we drop them every week, just turn on notifications. We'll see you on the next one.